Good evening, my name is Sandra Grindo. Okay, I'm part of the San Diego Socialist Campaign. Uh, District 9 is very important to us because it represents the forgotten political campaigns. Walking by City Heights, you can see social inequality and misery in workers who live there constantly. They constantly bring the topic of better salaries and working conditions. Can we ask the speakers to stand? Oh. I think it'll be easier for people. Okay. So, um, workers have experienced uh, long periods of intense exploitation and their employers haven't had any consideration for the social consequences that this brings. Uh, their leaders have abandoned the principles of the working class and have embraced the formula of the ruling class. Since also their union leaders are closely linked to the capitalist parties, there is very little or no political identification with the current political parties. Uh, the real people have not been listened to. What makes San Diego Socialist campaign different is that our campaign is not traditional. For the first time, people from the community will be running for city council. That's why I'm here speaking on behalf of the workers, as we say in Mexico, sin pelos en la lengua, straight to the point, and about what San Diego Socialist Campaign stands for. San Diego Socialist Campaign goal is to represent the working class majority in City Heights. We don't have the intention to be the negotiator between the entrenched interests of capitalists and millionaires and their organizational representatives as such as the Chamber of Commerce, Business and Trade Groups, the Union Tribune, or any other formal or informal representatives of the local 1%. We unapolog unapologetically fight for the interests of working people and will not compromise in representing their interests. We will not make back deals, backroom deals, sell out our community, and we'll be publicly accountable to the community we represent. To ensure this, we will not take any money from corporations or their intermediaries. Our platform is built through community dialogue, and all of our prospective candidates have to go through a democratic and transparent selection process. Individual ambition, connections with entrenched power, and access to big donors will not determine our candidates or campaign. Should I continue? Yes, please. Yes, okay. <laughs> our campaign is built through active participation in the struggles that confront the working class majority in City Heights, opposing police and ICE brutality and racial profiling, fighting unconditionally and without uh, backing down from the demand for $15 an hour of minimum wage and supporting full inclusion and protection for undocumented immigrants. We do not see these as negotiating ships or subjects of interest only during the select election time. We are from these communities and live these experiences. The policies we advocate for will affect us directly. Our candidate will stand up and oppose the racist campaigns targeting communities of color in San Diego, such as the curfew sweeps in City Heights, Operation Lemon Drop and Lemon Grove, and the implementation of California Panel, uh, Penal Code 182.5 throughout San Diego. These campaigns originate with the current government, especially led by San Diego Attorney General Bonnie Dumani who has focused her time in office in criminalizing, criminating uh, working class communities of color, especially San Diego's African American community. Okay. We not only seek working people's votes, but we also aim to use our campaign to, to help organize the community itself. The electoral process and the method of the Democratic and Republican establishment is to view the people in City Heights as voting cattle who are expected to become passive bystanders to the political process after election votes are counted. Our campaign will be also be in the workplaces, campuses, and in the streets as we seek to encourage people in the community of City Heights to use our campaign as a means to help organize and fight in their own interests where they work, go to school, and interact with brother with the broader society. Thank you.
we talk and then we will ask questions. Just your name, her last oh. name. My name is Sandra Galani. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to City Heights. Um, I first want to thank the, uh, the Women's Club for hosting this conversation, a very critical conversation there, that we hardly speak about. We have an opportunity to elect a representative of District 9. Hopefully that will come from the community that's been in the community for, for, for uh, quite a while. Uh, my name is Georgia Gomez and I'm running for to be uh, the council representative for this district, for District 9. I've been in the community, I've been in City Heights for over eight years and possibly even longer if I go back during my college years. I went to San Diego State. That's where I received my degree on environmental natural resource geography. I currently work at a nonprofit organization, Environmental Health Coalition. I've been there for over 11 years working on developing um, policies that will address the environmental injustices occurring in low income communities. I've been working with residents, really working on empowering residents to become more active and, and really be the influencer of what happens in their communities. And I want to continue doing that work. I've been involved in City Heights for over eight years. I was part of the redevelopment um, area committee. I'm currently part of the City Heights planning group. I uh, I supported the very first farmer's market that came into City Heights. That was a, a very successful market that provided, it brought fresh organic produce to this community that hardly has any good quality food. So um, I'm excited that I was part of that. I'm currently um, involved in really bringing more resources into the community to improve the walking and biking infrastructure. Um, so I've been working a lot on developing po um, policies that will improve uh, communities like District 9. Historically, we know that District 9 has been neglected, and I want to work on ensuring that th that no longer happens. We have issues related to the cost of living, those that have, have a lot, and they continue to earn more. And those that have not, don't have. And we're in the disparities are getting bigger. So we really need to address that. And that impacts the quality of housing that we have. We have a shortage of affordable housing. I've been doing some affordable housing in other communities. I want to bring public and private partnerships to really provide more accessible housing for this community and want to really push on, on those issues that are hardly happening right now. Um, there are infrastructure issues related in this community, but I don't mean I don't mean potholes. We got to look beyond that. There is lack of lighting. People do not feel safe and they don't come out. So we really need to improve that. The walkability of this community is impacted negatively. So we really need to address those issues. So there's a lot of issues that are occurring in this community. I'm very familiar with them because I see them every day being part of this community um, at, for over eight years. So this is why I'm working on, this is why I'm running for city council. I want to bring the work that I've done as an active, proactive resident of this community, and I want to bring that at city council and really partner with the community to move those issues forward. Thank you. in order uh, of the, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, um, Sally. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here, and thank you for the, to the Democratic Women's Club for hosting this great event so that we can all gather some good information and be able to make that a very important decision that we have at the ballot box next June. Um, my name is Araceli Martinez. I'm running for City Council District 9. I've been a resident of the community for 18 years. I don't think any candidate can say that on me. I've lived in the college area, I've lived in City Heights, and I've lived in Talmadge, and I'm now currently I live in Kensington. Really, it's South Kensington. I've heard some people call it Bamboo Gardens, um, but I am on the cusp, I'm on Mead Avenue, so I see uh, both worlds. I see the world that is Kensington and the affluency that people are talking about. And then I also walk one block down to El Cajon Boulevard and 
um, I experience that world as well, and as I do every day where, um, you know, just being part of the community. Um, I want to run a platform of infrastructure. I think that's very important. Um, as Georgette was mentioning, it does go beyond um, potholes. We need uh, to bring affordable housing. There's a big shortage of affordable housing here in the community. Um, people uh, tend to live together. There's the low income, um, obviously, issue. The, the community is not making the progress that uh, we could be making because of the strength and energy that is in the community. Um, uh, streets, definitely, we need sidewalks, we need um, the roads, we need the lighting. And I also want to make sure that the uh, trolley station um, gets built here. Uh, we have those two platforms on Alcohol Boulevard and on University. And yes, currently we have the 235 bus that takes people in North and South. And, um, but we do need to bring in the trolley this way. We need to make sure that those um, stations get open and become fully functional so that we can get um, you know, the more walkable communities that we're looking for so that we can get the, um, you know, the bike-friendly communities because, as we all know, um, on, on bus systems, you can put two, bu two bikes at the front of the bus and then everybody else has to wait for the next bus. Um, so that's another thing for me. Um, um, having been a member of the community for such a long time and having essentially grown up in the community um, since I was 18 onward, um, I too, you know, experienced firsthand uh, riding the bus system. I know, you know, taking the 7 every day on University Avenue, the 15 up and down Alcohol Boulevard, the 13 to San Diego State, where I, I too went to San Diego State. Um, I majored in political science, I majored in psychology, and both of those fields have really been helpful uh, for me in my current field. I'm an attorney, I do family law, and I do education rights. Um, so in the area that I'm in, um, to be able to uh, counsel people who are going through the really difficult times in their lives, that, um, you know, the transitions that they have to be um, going through, both those degree, degrees have been really helpful for me to be able to focus um, on my clients. Um, I do education rights. I go out there and I advocate for kids with special needs um, all over San Diego County, including here in District 9, uh, get the services that they need uh, in their schools. And if the school can't provide for them there, then, you know, then we have to make some other tough decisions and um, possibly move uh, to other schools where they can't get the services that they need. Um, I've done a lot of volunteer work as well throughout the years, throughout my entire lifetime. Again, both here in District 9 and all over San Diego, and even as a child growing up in Imperial County, um, out of just uh, a sheer willingness, and that's just who I am, uh, I would go do park cleanups, I would go do graffiti cleanups, even as a 10, 11, 12 year old. Um, here in, in, in San Diego in District 9, uh, I've gone and spoken to um, students at Hoover High School about the importance of staying in school and um, you know going to college and having those positive role models available to them and making myself available to them. Um, I precinct walked um, on behalf of the Labor Council up and down the streets here in District 9 uh, back in 2010 uh, when uh, uh, now Governor Brown was running for election. Um, I, I, even in my own uh, neighborhood, without needing any specific title, I just go out there and if I see that my alley is a big mess, I will just pick up a broom and I, it, I just want to make my neighborhood clean and beautiful. And that's, you know, I take the initiative myself to take care of that. Um, if I see that nobody else is, is stepping up and doing it, um, all over San Diego County, I just volunteered uh, recently um, to go clean the uh, Ocean Beach uh, Riverfront. Um, that was a very enjoyable activity, and it makes me feel good to do the volunteer work, um, again, uh, without pay, without title. Um, last week, um, I was in Sacramento. I don't normally speak like this, as a matter of fact, but I was out there talking to legislators about uh, workers' issues. Um, we were asking, uh, the, one of the bills that we were talking about on behalf of Consumer Attorneys of California, which represents plaintiffs um, and really people, consumers all over the state, 
uh, um, to get uh, workers to not be forced into arbitration agreements, which some employers right now can't do, and they make it a condition of employment. So we were asking that they, that, that you be hired on the merits, and then if you want to at some point enter into an arbitration agreement, then you can do so um, after the fact. Uh, but it shouldn't be a hiring decision and it shouldn't be a terminating decision. I was also up there um, asking for increased court funding. Um, I don't know if anybody here is aware, but it, the courts have lost $1.1 billion. And so I'm up there volunteering my time on behalf of all people so that we can bring you know, justice locally, just as we're saying, all, all politics is local and you know, we have to go up there and ask for these things um, so that we can then feel the effects here in the community. So again, I do volunteer in the community. I've lived here 18 years and I volunteer all over San Diego County, all over the state, and I want to make sure that our voice not only gets um, brought together here and heard, echoed here and in City Hall, and beyond. Thank you. Thank you Can those of you in the back hear? Yes. yes. Okay. I just want to just check to make sure. Um, okay, Sarah. Um, Sarah, would you pronounce your last name for me? Science. Science. Mm -hmm. Like Joe Myers, if anybody remembers. <laughs> 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 Big right. yellow taxi. Man. Yes. Exactly. How appropriate. My name is Sarah. I'm program director at United Taxi Workers in San Diego. Our office is right down the street on Fairmont. Um, I walked here today. I live down the street off of 43rd and University. I've lived here about five years. Um, I live here because I was actually gentrified out of downtown. Um, me and my partner came to San Diego. We're both urban dwellers and we went to downtown San Diego um, and thought that was our spot. And uh, unfortunately it was not and our rent went up. So we came to City Heights. Um, and we couldn't be happier. Um, unfortunately, our rent just went up in City Heights as well. Um, they just called City Heights an up and coming neighborhood and we all know what that means, um, which is one of the issues I want to address. Um, but I have not decided to run yet um, because I want to listen and, to people and I want to see what people want. Um, this campaign is not about me, it's about you. Um, and it's about what the community wants. Um, so I cannot come up here and say, vote for me. Um, I want you to vote for yourself and the issues that matter to you. Um, so I would just, you know, I, I want to talk about that right now, but I'll tell you a little bit about my background because um, I, I guess that's important. Um, I'm, I started my activism when I lived in Dominican Republic um, for over a year. It's a third world country. Um, there I saw poverty like I've never seen before. I grew up in Boston, um, but it was nothing compared to what I saw in the campo, in the country, in Dominican Republic. Um, so when I was there, I decided I'm going to join the Peace Corps, not realizing that you have to have a college degree to join the Peace Corps. <laughs> so um, that didn't work out. So I ended up going to college. I got a degree in sociology and critical criminology, which means that I studied the prison industrial complex. And I feel very passionate about um, a majority of African-American men being in prison as opposed to college. I think this is a serious systemic issue. Um, and then after that, while I was in college, my first labor activism came with um, farm workers in Immokalee, Florida. Um, they were uh, demanding one cent more per pound of tomato. They were being pistol whipped in the fields. Um, and I was able to join successful campaigns against Taco Bell and Burger King. Um, and then I also worked on this campaign called Take Back the Land, um, where we actually created a village called Emoja Village, um, where homeless people could live on a vacant lot. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know there's more than two times empty houses than there are homeless folks. So we're dealing with a capitalistic crisis in our country. I don't think that we can solve a lot of it from city council, but I think that it's a platform for us to start discussing these things. And there's a lot of trans, um, transformative things that we can do on the city council um, to change these things, like homelessness in City Heights. Um, like I said, I work at the Labor Council building and we let people sleep in our parking lot every night. Um, they shouldn't have to do that. Um, and then I was also a Meritor volunteer and um, now obviously at United Taxi Workers. And our United Taxi Workers are amazing. Um, they helped pass one of the most significant um, labor victories, policy victories in this recent history in San Diego. Um, over 500 of them lined out outside of City Hall. Um, and that's just an example. And a majority of them, 94% are immigrants. Over 70% are African refugees. Um, and they are not usually involved in this process. So through my work at United Taxi Workers, I spend a lot of time on the 10th floor <laughs> on City Hall. And I see how inaccessible it is. 
Um, I also have recently got involved in advocacy around Civic San Diego. Again, meetings at 3 p.m. on a Wednesday where you have to pay 15 bucks for parking um, just to say, don't gentrify my neighborhood. Um, ask me first before you develop here. Um, so, and I'm going to kind of be all over the place with this, but infrastructure, we want to talk about infrastructures, potholes and lights are important, but what we also have to talk about is po project labor agreements. Who is building our, you know, who is filling our potholes, who are building our buildings? Um, if, if these developers come into our neighborhoods and they don't agree to pro uh, hire people from the local community, it's hurting our communities. Um, so also I recently got my um, master's degree. Um, I went to law school for a year and I dropped out. I'm a law school dropout um, because I'm, I'm on the ground. I'm an organizer. I'm always going to be an organizer. So I went and got my master's degree um, in nonprofit management and leadership. Um, and basically, I, if I decide to run, I want to run because I want to include people. I want to include under, underserved communities. In the last election, a majority of the people who came out were white. Um, and they weren't even from you know, communities, working class, District 9 for the majority is a working class community. Um, so my impetus to run is also to run outside of the establishment. I know I go to these dinners and I go to these breakfasts and it's not, again, accessible to people. And I see this um, from the lens that I'm coming from and I want people to feel like they have a choice. Um, so that's why I'm here. I'm so excited that your choice is um, many women of color here. Um, that's so exciting for me. Um, but I just, I want people to have the opportunity. Um, our president, Mikhail Hussein, is on the City Heights Town Council. That's beautiful, you know? Um, and I think as an organizer, that's what I want to bring to City Hall. I also want other people who want to run to feel like they can run if they're not part of the establishment. It's okay if you're not shaking hands at breakfasts and dinners. If you serve your community and you know what your community wants, run for office. We should welcome that. So um, I look forward to your questions. Uh, thank you. Actually, I'm going to hold the, um, the, the timer uh, towards you guys so you can see it. I think that might be better. <laughs> good, good evening, everybody. My name is Carita Sanchez. Uh, I'm a resident of South Press, so I'm at the southern, southern tip of District 9. Um, and I, I'm really, actually, re really very excited that I, you know, I was part of the process we, uh, to draw these new districts, and it was a very exciting process, something that we hadn't done. Uh, in terms of talking to other communities about what this should look like um, and what San Diego would look like. And, and we put together a shared term vision of what San Diego would look like um, some time ago. So I'm also very excited, like Sarah, to see that there are opportunities and there are lots of women up here. And of course, there are also, also there's also men in the audience who are, um, are, are looking at this race. And, and the reason that I'm here, like Sarah, I haven't decided to run, but the reason that I, I am thinking this thoroughly through uh, is because I have a stake in District 9, as much, as much as you have a stake in District 9. And I feel it so, so passionately within my heart um, because I have a three-month-old, which you heard crying uh, earlier, uh, and I have a four-year-old. And these are, these are, like, this is my future, right? Just like our kids are our future. Um, that's my stake in this district, what this city looks like, what my council district looks like, what the priorities are. Do we have a progressive council that's going to push policies that bring communities, that uplift communities? that uh, really help working class folks get out, get ahead, provide equity in the distribution of resources and the projects and the things that we're looking at. And, you know, a lot of the decisions that are being made at City Hall are ones that are not backed up by, you know, where, we, where the need is actually located, right? Um, and that's not, that's not necessarily a problem of this person or that person. I mean, there really needs to, there needs to be data behind how we distribute those resources. And I know that folks are working on that. I know that our council members have been working on that. Um, but, but really, I'm here exploring this opportunity and it, because there's so much at stake, right? Especially in 2016, where this council could go many ways, but it needs to grow progressive. And we need to work together to elect people that are gonna do things that are right for the community. Um, City Heights has so many advantages, uh, but there are a lot of folks that still need, right? We, as we look, as I look at, I look out and think about this run and think about why District 9 is important is because it's a microcosm of what San Diego is. We have Kensington Talmadge, right, where there are some well-to-do folks, and then there's South Crest and there's City Heights. Uh, all these places, particularly City Heights and South Crest and some of these places, we don't have access to a lot of stuff. You know, I, I realized the other, the, I realized over the couple of years that we've, uh, probably almost nearly 10 years that we lived uh, in, in South Crest Mountain View, that we really drive outside of our community to get the things that we need. Um, we do have a north gate, uh, 
but I have to go, you know, I have to do stuff beyond that, right? Uh, where do I go get a co where do I go get coffee in the morning? Where do I take my kids out to play? In fact, on my way over here, four kids uh, from the from our little complex came in to play with uh, with Nico, which is why he's not here. Um, why can't we play at the park? Um, so what what we what what I think about in terms of how important District Nine is, it, it's 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 the people, right? And it's this it's this really cro it's a, it's a tough district, right? Because you have these folks that uh, have priorities, and sometimes those priorities come are, are they don't, they're not the same, and so you're trying to figure out what you do uh, and how you you really equitably represent people and provide the resources that they need. And there is no doubt that in this district we we require more resources than other parts of the city. Quite frankly, because we're far behind, because we have broken dis because we have bad sidewalks, and we have po I mean, hey, listen, I, I potholes are our big problem. You can't ride. A, I mean, it's, it's terribly dangerous to r to ride a bicycle across a pothole. Uh, we don't have enough open space. We don't have enough safe space. Who comes out at night? Nobody comes out in South Crest and walks around at night. Um, the, the 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 lady that does the, the that owns a nail shop down the street from my house keeps the bar. She keeps the doors locked, and as a client comes in, she'll open the door. Um, and that's that's a scary thing for a small business, right? And it's just her and her her aunt who uh, run the business. So I'm really excited that's there. We also have across the street across the street from my complex uh, a drug cleaning business, and there's always always someone there. Um, and so these are all things that I think need to be addressed, which is why I'm seriously looking at this race. And I'm very excited that there are a lot of options. There was a time and a day where there weren't enough there weren't enough options. Um, and this is a good problem to have, and I'm really proud to stand up here with all these women and get to know them more and to get to know you more, and hopefully you'll get to know me a little bit more, regardless of what, I, what I've done. I worked for Senator Boxer, I worked for Senator Boxer 10 years, Susan Davis before that for four years. I've had the opportunity to look at this county in a, in a, in a this region, um, and to identify priorities. Um, in City Heights, I can't, you know, I can't take full credit for anything that's done. We work for staff and elected officials, we don't take credit for things. But I can say that in a state as large as California, uh, a senator re really relies on her staff to push priorities, and so I've been able to work on wonderful things like, like my boss chairs the transportation committee. We're going to write a transportation bill. How do we steer those resources? I mean, we really do have to fend off Republicans and other folks who don't want to put money into mass transport and public transportation. And so those are things that that I have worked on. One, two of the things that I that I've been able to be of help in this district um, was the the uh, paying appropriations money that went aside uh, that was set aside to. Uh, extend the green line to San Diego State, and also we advocated and we were successful in uh, setting aside funding so that City Heights could uh, renovate and expand its its health center. So those are really important things. To me.